Gunbound is another one of those 2000s Korean games that are on life support. While it does supposedly still have an official server up, it no longer offers an actual proper download. You have to use the weird backwards ass browser extension. On top of that, the website is very poorly translated and straight up looks like a scam. That being said, here's what we're gonna do. I'll show you two different private servers. The first one we'll look at is Origins, which is one of those vanilla classic type releases made by the same people who did the legacy MapleStory server. And after that, we'll look at the Git server, which in turn runs the Game of the Road Champion release. And we'll look at what changes were made and any differences they might have. Though many compare this game to Worms, it actually takes heavy inspiration from Fortress 2, a Korea-only game released in 1999. You can definitely see the similarities. The game was pretty big there, even getting its own merchandise and animation, but it was never released to the West. It's also a bitch to Google nowadays. In comes Gunbound. Released in 2002 by these guys, it did a lot of the same things Fortress 2 did, but this time with a new coat of paint and releasing it outside of Korea. When you first launch the game, you're met with the Choose Your Server screen. While this isn't important due to the general lack of choice here, the screen shows you the player ranks. You got dragons, wands, battle axes, hammers, and then there's you, a little chick. It does a good job of putting you in your place, and generally other players will make sure that you know that you are, in fact, a little chick. After you come to terms with that, you join a room and choose your vehicle, or mobile as they're called here, which can get quite confusing in light of today's gaming industry, but I digress. Each mobile has a different type association, like mechanical, bionic, explosive, etc. With each vehicle having two of them, a damage type and a defense type. Like for example, this guy has bionic defense and electric damage. You have 16 different mobiles to choose from. The art style is pretty consistent across all of them, save for these three. Why do they get to have normal eyes when everyone else has these exaggerated balls? Also, why do some of them have actual names, while well, some just read as generic templates? Like you have Bigfoot, Boomer, Grub, but then you have shit like turtle, dragon, ice. It just seems like the design team got tired at one point and just said fuck it, that would do. Whatever, in terms of looks, they're all very distinct and some of them are actually pretty cool. You might have noticed that a couple mobiles we've talked about don't appear on the select screen. It's these two. Basically, the only way you can get to play with them is by selecting random and hoping you get them. This is actually a pretty neat feature since most people will want a chance to play with them, so as a result they will be using a larger variety of vehicles in an attempt to get the rare two. It keeps things interesting, instead of just everyone being a one-trick pony. After you choose your mobile, you're gonna want to get some items. You have six slots for them, and each item takes either one or two spaces. You have attack items like duo, which makes you launch two shots, defensive items that heal you, stuff that can teleport you around the map, etc. Though most likely you'll just be using duo because of the massive damage increase. Well, you lock your items, you ready up, and granted that everyone else did the same, the game begins! Now, if you've played Worms, this will sound quite familiar to you. You're put in a random part of the map, you move, aim, account for wind, fill up this bar here, and try not to hit your friends. You can also choose your shot type up here. You have your two regular shots and this SS one, which is a special you can use once a match. The projectile variety in this game is pretty good. You got explosive cluster balls, ground piercing boomerangs, two stage missiles, fire barrages, and so on. It's good stuff, and it makes each vehicle feel pretty unique. You have about 20 seconds to take your turn, and you have a small resource bar for moving. This means turns go by pretty fast, so you'll never be waiting too long, even on an 8-player room. Now, in case you die early and you have to sit out the match, don't worry, for the game has you play a gambling minigame while you wait, so you can get a bit of that soothing gambling high, and even influence the game as you do it. You see, while you can't get gold and whatnot from this, you can also get stuff to drop on your enemies, like TNT. Every now and then you also get these random events around the map, stuff like hurricanes and whatnot. They're dictated by this here bar, and they influence your shot if it passes through them. It can be beneficial at times, and at other times, not. The maps are pretty good for the most part, though this one is way too overplayed and it's too brown, but look, this one has two dudes holding it up, this one you play on teeth and there are these two dino heads, this one has a super rich and comfy background. It's a shame most people stick to that one brown map, there's some nice variety here. On to the shop! Now, right off the bat, you can see that, though the items could look cool in-game, they look really jank as icons. It's not a thing of it just aging poorly, they could have drawn the items instead of displaying a zoomed image of the in-game model, but they didn't, so yeah. I also want to show you some of the item descriptions. Safari hat in Africa! Let's be the heroine of this fantasy world. My name is a troublemaker. Destroy my opponent with body crush. I like panda. And last but not least, cute chicken is born. 
It's honestly worth it going through the shop just to read the poorly translated item descriptions, even if the items themselves aren't really all that nice to look at. Alright, now, speaking of poor translations, we're gonna go through the story text on the official website. Thing is, it looks as if they just wrote it in Korean and put it through Google Translate, which they probably did, but I digress. We'll go through it and then we'll talk about how absolutely thrilling it is, alright? Alright, here it goes. Planet Lond, that has seven moons, is having peaceful life under Princess Rena and the Great Warrior Observator's care. One day, the Princess Rena fell asleep deeply. She saw falling black stars to the planet Lond in a dream. In the next day, an old woman came and warned Rena that Lond is in trouble and bad luck. And then, the woman left Rena. Rena had a sense of foreboding for a moment, but she just took away the feeling. Before long, a real black star was falling to the Lond. Rena was surprised and asked Observator, who is a hero in the Lond, to investigate the spot. Observator went and found the black fallen star and approached it slowly. Then, black and thick fog raised from the star and Observator blacked out on the spot, suddenly. Observator woke up soon, but the black star was disappeared with no trace. Observator came back to the palace to let Rena know this strange situation. When he reached the place, dark clouds were all around there. Observator thought that Rena could be in trouble and got into the palace in a hurry to protect her. Stepping in the lobby, Observator was extremely surprised because there was a man looked exactly the same as him. The strange man called himself Dark Observator. The dark observator challenged observator to a duo and observator accepted it. Observator felt something odd and did not have any strength in the dark fog. Eventually, observator lose the duo and was driven out of the palace. After it, Lond lose its twinkles. <laughs> dark, dark observator keeps Princess Rena in the tower of the castle, people say. Dark observator is going to marry Rena soon. Observator is now determined to save Rena from the Dark Observator with his peers. Now, your choices remain. Eliminate darkness of Lon with Observator, or renew and change Lon with Dark Observator. Please, make a decision. Alright, well, that was shit. I mean, it's not like I have high expectations for a story in these types of games, but... It's literally just the most token fantasy force of good, force of evil, ah shit, the princess got taken to the highest tower of a castle, and oh god, oh no, the evil dude plans on marrying her type story. Now that I think of it, I'm kind of glad it's so poorly translated, at least that made it interesting to read instead of just plain boring. The music is very good. It's relaxing and playful at the same time, especially the main menu song. I hope you enjoyed that, because if you choose to play this game, you'll be spending a good chunk of your time with it listening to that song. The bass work on some of the tracks really impressed me. Listen to this. It's some really enjoyable stuff, though there are some inconsistencies. For example, you have those two tracks I just showed you, called Party Night Ready and Sea of Hero, and then you have a track called Killing Machine. It doesn't seem to fit, does it? Speaking of doesn't fit, listen to how jarring the transition from normal music to sudden death music is. I'll link the soundtrack in the description of the video. The good stuff definitely outnumbers the out of place stuff. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's look at the Git server. Right off the bat, you can see the menus are a lot more pleasant to look at, the icons pop out more, and look how many people are playing. You see, while Origins has about 50 people online, this has like 200. So you'll be spending a lot less time waiting for an open room. The game starts you off with some cash and some gold, so we might as well go check out the shop. Right? Well, I can't really see my character's face. I mean, in general it's hard to understand what's going on there, but we'll talk about that issue in a bit. 
The fun item descriptions are gone and they're all in Portuguese, so we won't have much to talk about here. The shop still has some weird stuff though. This version adds two mobiles, this frog and this tractor looking ass dude. I really like the design of the frog, look at him. Well, let's get into a game. You can see the UI is a lot more streamlined, they got rid of the bar at the top and managed to cram everything into the bottom one. I know some people are against this change, but I actually quite like how it looks. Now, about that character issue, to put it bluntly, they're all bloated. It really gets in the way of the previously clean design everything has and makes them ugly to look at, and it clashes with the background. It's a shame too, since items gives players stats, you'll be at an objective disadvantage if you choose not to bloat yourself. The gameplay, music and graphics on the server are all virtually the same, so that basically wraps it up here. It doesn't really matter which server you play on, they're both relatively active and offer the same gameplay loop. I chose to do most of this video on the Origins one because it's in English and the community seemed a tad bit nicer. It's completely down to personal preference which one you pick. Gunbound was an odd one for me. While I get why I loved it so much as a kid, I can't quite place my finger on why I've been enjoying it now. You'd think that having played a lot of worm games over the years would have me spoiled for choice and a game like this where you only have three shot types would seem too dumbed down for me. But after only a couple matches I was really enjoying myself. There was just beauty and simplicity I guess. I will leave you with this quote from the official website. Gunbound means the infinite war between each unique mobile and its riders. Now, be a warrior of Lond and please protect Rena and Peace of Lond. Thank you so so much for watching and have a nice day.